Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the RK Tokens podcast. And of course, we are the RK Tokens. I am the Anomaly Will Ferro. Leo Thomas, aka Mr. Slick Living. I'm Patrick Cloud. And today we have a lot to discuss. This is one of our topical episodes. So we are talking about what's going on right now in the day's world of video games and pop culture. We got WandaVision today we're taking care of. We got some Pokemon news as well as some GTA 6 news. So you're going to want to stay tuned into this podcast. First starting off, we're headed to Marvel slash Disney Plus. WandaVision. The first Marvel TV show here on Disney Plus has finally had its rollout. It's came out. Um, I, I've seen it. I don't know if the two of you have seen it yet. Um, either one of y'all, have y'all checked out WandaVision yet? I watched the first episode. All right. How you feeling, Cleo? Uh, I feel great about it. I if If Marvel is doing the comic book accurate story of Wanda being in control of uh, being out of control mentally, as far as her uh, reality bending powers. Mm -hmm. This is what I think will help lead in the X-Men. This is what I think may lead in uh, the actor who plays Pietro in the X-Men first class series that Quicksilver. That's what I see maybe potentially helping us get into X-Men being introduced into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. Um, Vision being alive still throws me for a loop. I don't get it. Because it, it's going to suck if by the end of this series, we find out that Vision's been dead the whole time and Wanda's just out of her goddamn mind. Yeah. Like if she just, it ends with her just sitting in a chair, just blanked out. That's going to suck. But I, I'm loving what we're building so far and I can't wait to see where they take us. Now, you said something very interesting that goes back to stuff that we talked about in the last podcast, which was the X-Men coming to the MCU. Right. So there have been rumors that Quicksilver may make an appearance in WandaVision. But to Cleo's point, we don't know which version they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Supposedly her, the one that was in the MCU is supposed to be making a return. But as uh, Cleo just said, with their purchase of Fox, the first class uh, may come up. But wait a minute. No, that wouldn't be right. I just thought about that. How so? He'd be older. This is now. First class was in the 80s. He'd be older. He'd be like in his 40s now mm. when this happened. I just thought right. about that. He'd be in his 40s if this just happened. Mm. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying as far as the time stamp of, of it all. Um, yeah. yeah, but at the end of the day, this is still reality altering powers of Wanda. It doesn't matter. Like nothing matters. Like literally yeah, that's true. nothing matters. Like Wanda yeah. is the legit, the, the Scarlet Witch is the human embodiment of all the infinity stones pretty much. She's mm -hmm. capable of doing all those things yeah. by her damn self. Like she's an Omega level, crazy powerful mutant. So we'll see where it takes us, man. Uh, I'm excited for what they build here though. We're, we're going to see, we're going to see how this takes off. Yes. And Pat, since you haven't seen it, though, uh, I will uh, tell you, though, you will have to see it just like the rest of the people that's listening to the video version and the audio version. You will need to see WandaVision, not because we're telling you it's good, but because in order for you to follow the next phase of the Marvel Cinematic Movies, you have to watch WandaVision because it opens up the entire cinematic universe for the next phase of it. So um, okay. her, her also making the feature in uh, Doctor Strange's next film, The uh, Multiverse of Madness. We may see some of that in here. But the reason why I also brought this up was because uh, I found out something very interesting about this uh, show as well. So the show has nine episodes, nine episodes and they're 30 minutes. So again, it's very easy for everyone to catch up on. But I have to ask y'all. So do you remember when Friends came out and it was coming towards the end and we heard they were making like a million dollars an episode. I do. Dumb money, right? Well, WandaVision decided they wanted to kick them in they ass when it came to movies as they have broken a new record as the most expensive show ever made in TV history. 25 million an episode totaling out $225 million to make this TV show. Well, I don't think Friends was an expensive show. They just paid 
the just highest. Right? Well, no, we just just imagine though from hearing like when when that news broke and we heard that like yo, like you get paid a million dollars an episode back then. That mm -hmm. was crazy to hear that a TV show was making them that kind of money. So right. just to hear this to go like yo, y'all paying twenty five million dollars. What was Game of Thrones? Because I remember there was a big deal when Game of Thrones dropped and, and they had like all the big dragon fights and all that stuff. Like, I think it was that and the crown that were uh, uh, bragging about like how expensive it was per episode. So theirs were too very expensive, but unfortunately <clears throat> they are shy by $10 million. It was $15 million to, uh, to be able to do a few of the episodes that you mentioned. So- Man. Although it was a lot, nowhere near what WandaVision is putting down per episode. 25 per episode? Jesus Christ. Yes, indeed. It, but we, we're going to have to wait and see how this builds out then, because for 25 million, Will, for what, episode one don't seem $25 million worth of budget. So, no. so, here, so here's the thing that I'm seeing now, though. We're watching the first episode and the second episode. We're yes. going to get through a lot of the stuff we saw in the trailer, I think, in the first three. Okay. And then I think in the next three, in the next, in the rest of them, all kind of stuff going to go sideways. Because remember, we've only keep seeing the TV show stuff. Like, yeah. they're showing us, like, the I Love Lucy type of black and white sitcom, then to the whole Brady Bunch, then even having them in their actual retro outfits from the comic book. Right. We still don't know what's going on what happens when she realizes all of this is fake and he realizes all of this is fake and who's controlling what, what's going on, what time is this set in as to uh, Patrick's question, is this after Infinity Wars? Is this after they were snapped back? Like we have no idea who, what and where. And then, uh, then too, another thing that's been being thrown out now is this is supposed to be the opening for the secret invasion uh, phase of Marvel that they want to roll out. And this is supposed Damn. to be that starting point. Yeah. That's exciting. So are they doing it one week at uh, one episode a week? Yes. Uh, um, they aired the first two episodes of uh, premiered on Friday, just so we could be able to see uh, two 30 minutes when they have an hour. But I believe they'll be dropping every Friday at 9 p.m. Uh, and that's Eastern Standard Time. That's pretty cool. Did you guys catch, or Pat hadn't seen it yet. Will, did you catch the sword Easter egg? No, but I caught the earrings. Oh. I caught the earrings. Oh, no, 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 my fault. You had to see the second episode for that. Okay. You had to see the second episode. But uh, watch <laughs> The Black Lady when you get in there, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, so, of course, for those who've been watching Marvel movies for many, you're very aware of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is, you know, that's, that's the Avengers, pretty much. That's Nick Fury's whole crew. But um, th those guys only took care of Earth. SWORD, which stands for Strategic Homeland Intervention in, uh, Enforcement and Logistics Division, takes care of, wait, I did that wrong, sorry. SHIELD stands for that. SWORD, which is stands for Sentient World Observation and Response Department, takes care of everything galactic. Everything outside of the Earth, they take care of that. There is an Easter egg in there that uh, says that their presence is now in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So... Yeah, that's for sure setting up, as you said, the, the scrolls and everyone pulling up. Okay, but now also, too, that sets up uh, the, the confirmation of how they have set up the field and letting us know that we are set in present time because that is the people who have been taking over in the Falcon and Winter Soldier uh, series. So if you watch that trailer, S.H.I.E.L.D. is no longer there, but S.W.O.R.D. is. And there's, like, apparently a new Captain America type of figure that oh, yeah. they're working with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Cause from what I'm what I'm what I'm catching is is that uh, Falcon don't keep his shield. What? That's what I'm catching. I'm catching like I believe the government is going to take the shield from him Can't because they want a Captain America again, and they have their idea of who they want it to be. And I think they love <laughs> take the shield from him. Uh, yeah, we we know what we want. <laughs> we we <laughs> oh, that's for sure how they took it away. You know, yeah, you can be, uh, hang on. We got you some new wings, though, and a new suit. Yeah. But. Oh, God. We know that you're in the interim, but no. uh, <laughs> we know what our Captain America should be. 
And, you know, th things have been a little dicey since everybody came back after five years, you know. Things are still a little hot. And then the whole Spider-Man thing and, you know, pop, pop, pop with Mysterio. Ooh, this is... You can be Captain New York. I'm not even from New York. Well, you know. Well, I mean, New York always needs a captain, you know. Captain South. Captain <laughs> 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 Yo, chill, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd be like, what? Be like, put, put the suit away. Put the suit away. Captain like, Bible Belt. This is Bible Belt. It's like, you know, I just give us the just give us the shit. You should, just go Captain Chitlin, sir. You'd be like, you know what? Thank you guys. I'm out. That's, yes. that's man. That is crazy. But I do look forward to um what they're bringing as far as the Marvel shows are going, the fact of intertwining them in with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, very uh, smart on their part to be able to do, um, makes it a little bit uh, easier of a pill to swallow to, you know, from the uh, Netflix shows getting canceled and stuff, because that is very understandable. But, uh, and then of course, before we do move on into our next topic, just a few things to go with the Marvel stuff. Uh, Loki has also gotten approved for season two before it even drops. Already. I was about to say, where was season one at? Uh, I, we, it is supposed to be coming this year, but it undoubtedly has been given a season two of Loki. So apparently this first season is about to be banana. So we hope it can live up to it because we're definitely going to be finding out what happens afterwards. And then also to uh, just to keep in uh, confirmation, Charlie Cox, for those that don't know, Charlie Cox is our Netflix's Daredevil. And as we had mentioned, Daredevil has been officially thrown into the MCU, not being recast. He is the official Daredevil MCU and has finished filming his scenes for Spider-Man 3. So you will see wow. the, the Devils of Hell's Kitchen in Spider-Man 3 or Matthew Murdock in the courtroom we never know which way it's about to go but we do know uh one little small prediction of spider-man 3 apparently there is civil unrest amongst new york half of the people believe he killed mysterio half of the people believe he doesn't so yeah. we're gonna see exactly what happens in spider-man 3 but moving forward to some oh my fault clear no, another thing to add on to the marvel thing really quick then we can move on uh matt damon has been casted as an actual role in the upcoming Thor uh, Love and Thunder film. Now, yes. originally, because you were speaking about Loki, for those that don't, that don't catch that quick Easter egg cameo in it, uh, does anyone, if you remember the scene where Loki is uh, disguised as Odin, still on Asgard, uh, they're doing a play, a reenactment of how Thor and Loki Thor died. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you don't now, know until he attacks him? Yeah, exactly. Matt Damon is there acting as, I, as Loki, actually. As Loki. He's, he's yeah. actually doing that. Mm -hmm. So I'm very curious on if, if they're they're bringing Matt Damon back for that role of whatever character he was at that at that point, or uh -huh. if it's an original character that he's getting ready to get. Yeah. Um, quick thing as well, we do have Deadpool officially confirmed for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, right? Yes. It has to be an R-rated film. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be R? It's going to be an R-rated MCU film. Great. That opens up the door for Blade, but then you don't know what that also opens up the door for. The Punisher. Yeah. But do we really want to see Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool, and I can't remember my man's name at the moment who plays the Punisher actually on screen together? It's two, but, it's two different worlds. No. Like, it's way too different. I take the Punisher, like, serious. He's, like, a serious ass, almost too dark. You can't it's throw really Ryan dark. Reynolds in a scene with him. But no, but to go back to what we just talked about then, I think what will ease that is the Daredevil Spider-Man thing. We take Daredevil very seriously, but Spider-Man goofy as hell. So to That's see true. the two of them interact, like, and then again, too, the good thing about Daredevil, Daredevil is literally just an open target for Punisher. So I just can't imagine him saying something silly and Punisher literally blowing his brains out, and then he has to come back. Like, I cannot wait to see Punisher get, uh, Deadpool get on Punisher's nerves. I, like I cannot it. wait. But do y'all want to see um, old guy from The Walking Dead remain as the Punisher? Because oh, yeah. rumors that he's going to come back for season three as well. Yes. Yes. He's the he's perfect a great actor, actor for, okay. that, for that role. Perfect. It's dark, though. It is dark. I actually never made it through all the way through Punisher. How many seasons is it? Two? Just two. Yeah. But it it, it is a very, like, gruesome uh show to watch it, it, it is i will say that um 
with the exception though of Iron Fist. Let's not worry about him. Are y'all fine with everyone else that has been cast, like Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, going over to the MCU? Like, is it is it fine? Finally, I don't, cool say, I don't like those characters, so it really doesn't matter who is yeah, there, sure. who's cast. I just I don't like them. Okay. It just it further again proves the point why Marvel has this thing really figured out, bro. Because if you look at the DC films. You know, you're not going to catch the Teen Titans cast or Arrowverse. You're not catching those guys in any of the films like Justice League. They're not going to be there just because they have that old school line drawn between the middle. You're a TV actor. You're a film actor. Or they're not budging on that. No, that's not true, though. You, if you're going to sit here and give me the Ezra Miller Flash cameo, they only no. did that as a fanfare. Well, no, no, no. It go, it just, I say that as to the point we had last week, that more of the not traditional shit that DC need to stop being so flip-floppy and coming out with stuff and then it don't happen. Like, remember, what was the one thing you told us DC was doing earlier this week and now they've changed? It's like, yo, quit saying oh, stuff before it comes out. Justice League will no longer be a miniseries. It's just going to be a five-hour movie. Five, four or five-hour movie. Oh, five-hour movie? Yeah. Who wants that? Make it a mini series. <laughs> See, that's the problem. Nah, but that was, that's what they originally announced, Pat. It was supposed yeah. to be a mini series. It's supposed to be four episodes. And it's just like, yo, like y'all keep changing things up. Like, like how he just said, nobody crossing over for his actors and TV actors. Now it's it's like, what are you doing? Four hour movie. That's yeah. what we're getting. So we'll see. Marvel, I think again, Marvel, Marvel just has their finger on the pulse of all of this. They haven't, they haven't caught an L yet. They know exactly what they're doing. The fact that we do have uh, Charlie Cox pulling up to be our daredevil in the MCU, you know, they, they pulled that. They made that happen. They had to wait till the deals was out of the way, and then they finally said, "All right, bet, let's get them in there, and let's just continue to have these characters." Because you know, I think Marvel learned from their history as they sold the rights to all these characters. They had to wait to get them back. Now that they got them back, they're not going to like not nah, everybody balls to the wall. Let's go. Yeah, especially since they're gonna make this merch and we're gonna make this money. I love it. Yep. <laughs> so I look forward to see what Marvel is going to be doing. And so uh speaking of looking forward to seeing what is going to happen, uh, we've been getting a lot of news from Rockstar. Um apparently, just as, as what you speak of, like when the people say something, things are happening. And so, as we can tell, a lot of people were upset about GTA 5 coming to PS5 and no new news about a Grand Theft Auto 6 or anything. But now there has been more frequent rumors and news coming out about Grand Theft Auto 6. Uh, not sure where it's going to be taken, not sure exactly what's going to be happening. But the newest rumor is, is that GTA 6 will now be focused through the eyes of a female protagonist. I'm sorry for those that get offended. A woman! protagonist, however which way you want to go about it. But yes, the lead character in the campaign story is supposed to be a woman. So fellas, how are y'all feeling about this? I think it's dope. I think uh, Grand Theft Auto is a very brutal game. So it, it's... <laughs> the funny thing about Grand Theft Auto to me is it's like, it's almost like real Sims. It's like, what would you do if you could just go out and just wild out, no consequences, and everything would just reset? You know what I mean? It's, you kind of get to see the, the, the wildest parts. So we've seen, we've seen an 80s Coke dealer. We've seen a, a, a black dude in the hood. We've seen uh, an immigrant in New York. And then we saw like a mixture of all of those in the, in the last one. So it's like, this this is one of the moves that probably should have happened already. You know what I mean? And it's like, I think it's going to be kind of cool to see such a brutal game where you're throwing people out of cars and running from the police from the perspective of a woman. Like I, I fully, in, like that's, we're going to see that perspective throughout all the, the campaign missions, all of the relationships with other characters. I don't know. It's going to be, I think it's going to be interesting. Yeah. I agree, man. I, I think, like you said, it should it should have been happened. So I'm glad to see um, it potentially being able to happen now and the, just course the introduction of a new city, hopefully, you know, like, you know, hopefully we get to see either a new city or Vice City revised and stuff like that. But I, I look forward to it. I always get excited when uh, Grand Theft Auto comes out, as long as we don't have four happen again. Yeah. 
I, you know, GTA for me was I, I, I fell off after Vice City, really. Like San Andreas, I, I did play, but by that time I was kind of over it, and I did jump into the GTA Five campaign mode just a little bit. And Will's trying to drag, has tried to drag, I think me and Pat and my brother into the the online thing, and it's just too much. It just doesn't stop. For us to have a, a girl print, uh, protagonist, I'm very curious on how the gameplay style would be, like the physicality aspect of the character. Are they gonna are they gonna keep it the same, or are we gonna have more of a finesse type lead character as a woman, like the manipulation aspect of certain situations? Like I'm really curious how mm -hmm. it moves out, but we'll see, man. Let's see the first trailer announcement and see what we get. It's not gonna drop to like what 2023, maybe. You being so modest, sir. 2027. <laughs> Good point. Good point. That's basically saying it's not coming out. <laughs> I mean, at this point, G years. GTA 6 is now a Dr. Dre album. Like, we might get it. Probably not. Whatever. The It'll customization is going to be interesting. Man. You're going to have to be, you know, pick through like what, what bras you want, what halter tops you want, you know, yeah. what, what jeans is going to make you, 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 you look, you know, nice. You maybe wear heels. That's going to be an interesting part, you know, for for everybody yeah um i think so, enough you said what <laughs> I, I just gotta know just from your your creative mindset point they are always altering just little things as far as name goes and brands and stuff and we both i think all all three of us even the tech guy behind us can agree somehow some form of fashion nova is gonna make it into here what do you think they would call fashion nova in gta oh easy Fashion Nova. Here's the thing. They should have been doing this. They should have been like with all this crazy uh, in-game purchases. Like, I don't see how Franklin in Grand Theft Auto 5 isn't, you don't have the, the option of buying extra. And maybe it is like that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's like extra clothes or like, but I, I, I've never seen like a clothing collab or like something that you can buy within the game specifically. So they should have been doing that. I don't think necessarily think they need to start just because the, the lead is a woman. <laughs> but I feel like that, that would just be a smart move anyways. And then just to keep the brands what they're named. You know, if it's yeah. a Gucci collab, call it Gucci. If it's Fashion Nova, call it Fashion Nova. That'd be dope, yeah, because they do have uh they they be having releases like that, but it's mostly mostly like stuff that they do. So like if a new mission campaign comes out, it'd be like you can get the exclusive like logo of like whatever the mission is and stuff like that, or like a spunk which is supposed to be sprite like racer suit and stuff. So that's the like in purchases they'll let you get. I have a theory. What you got, Cleo? What if the reveal trailer to GTA Six is a woman? And the woman is voiced by Cardi B. Take my money. Take hey. my money. That would be amazing, actually. Right? Take it that all. That would be really tight. <laughs> right? Yo, I don't, I don't buy Cardi, but it's all the Cardi's that, yo. That'd be fine. I'm, or or her, it, I, actually, it'd be dope to have her in there. Mm. It'd be dope to have her in there, because me and uh, hey, Cardi. Yeah. I would love to see like some kind of rendition of Cardi in there. There's really no one else like that. <laughs> you no. Know, to, to be fair, she 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 was accused of robbing niggas when they sleep. So you know, like, we can just go down this road. Oh, we can go right down this true. road. There, she was accused of the whole robbing thing. So she I she fits the GTA that. life. She does fit that Bro, GTA life. So a Cardi B like character in Vice City, running running the scams, running the running the rob yo multiplayer. You can get the city girls with you, and you guys are running like squad missions. <laughs> Hot girl summer. Hot girl summer. Hot summer. Oh, summer DLC. That's gonna be the DLC. <laughs> Rockstar, if you listen in, we calling it again. The people yeah. would go nuts for it. You gotta be do so it. dope. Yes, it is, man. That would be so dope. So my whole thing. Oh, go no, no, wait, wait. I was just gonna say, just take it out of America. I feel like the hmm. the coolest thing that we never really thought about we always thought about like what new American city, but I would really, really like to see a Grand Theft Auto in like through the streets of Europe, you know, almost like how the Bourne identity, mm -hmm. the Bourne series was and how 007 was with, with foreign cars and just like those beautiful landscapes and cobblestone roads. Like I, I think that would be a move for Grand Theft Auto. If you're, if you're gonna have the female protagonist, mm -hmm. you might as well switch up the, the, the settings also like, we could get a completely different game instead of just Grand Theft Auto with a woman as lead, you know? 
Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind them actually going back to that. I think you said. It. I think that's the best idea, Pat. And them going back to London. That's where it orig- like GTA originally like started was over there. So I think mm. to take it back home after being gone for so long, because it was like one and two was there, but a, not a lot of crime happened for them to like develop a game. So they sold it to America, and then that's when three dropped. And so that's when we had Liberty City. So it's like for them to go back home and with them to have Rockstar Canada, Rockstar America, Europe, and to be able to now create London the way it would like to be, like London, Wales, uh, Paris, and then trying to like combine them like you did Los Santos, that would be the best. I think that'd be the best next move for them to uh, for six. I know I it started in London. Yeah. I think going overseas would be dope. You know, she gets flued out. To Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> the flu out option has to be in GTA 6. Flew <laughs> 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 out. flewed out. I think it'd be dope, bro. Run that. No, nah, man. Yeah. All jokes aside, I'm fucking with this. I, I I would like to see where they go, man. I just I just feel like it's the time though, even to really even make it like I threw out the Cardi B thing, but I think it's it's it feels like that kind of announcement could be right around the corner. I'm telling you, because the industry and the business, like, you know, of course, the, through the pandemic, we, we saw how, you know, within a, a year, video games became the number one medium, period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not television, not film, video games yeah. across the board. So everyone's going to throw their hat into, th- throw their, their name into their hat. So I'm telling you, I feel it. There's a, there's going to be something that's going to make a major move where we're going to be like, holy shit. Like we really are in this space now where this is people, where they want to tell the stories, where people want to create, where people want to act at, even though it's been there this entire time, but because it became the number one place, mm-hmm. it's only a matter of time, guys. Now I'm thinking the two other people you could throw in there because you could throw in Meg and Sweetie because Sweetie is really big on video games. So yeah. I could definitely see her having a character or talking as a character in here. So it's just like, like you said, video games are now becoming that medium and that bridge for all of the genres like the fact that video games and sports are now doing so much with one another now and just the funny thing oh you know the funny thing about that is uh i just gotta say this i called somebody out about this yesterday because uh they were making fun of us about video games and calling us nerds and i was like i don't think football and sports people understand you realize you're nerds right they're nerds you, you're mathematical nerds. You do percentages and fractions to find out speeds. And, not, and guess what? You're also cosplayers. You dress up as your favorite uh-huh. character. <laughs> That's funny. That's a great but, way to look at it. Yeah, we're the nerds, though. So I was like, okay, I just had to throw that out there. I was like, <laughs> I'm sick of it. We're all nerds. Leave us alone. That's good. So, but speaking of some more nerdy stuff, we've talked about... Uh, WandaVision being $25 million an episode. So I definitely want to come back to some money things. And uh, this is something I know Pat's a huge fan of, which is Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Pat, now, do you remember when you used to collect the Pokemon cards? You get the Pokemon sets and stuff, like the little big box? No, I never got the box. I got the uh, individual... um, Little sliders. It came with like seven of them. Yeah, you you ripped it open. It typically had the same stuff in it, probably Bulbasaurs and, you know, like just P- Pidgeys, you know, just like the random stuff. But every now and then, every like fourth or fifth one, you might get that that rare card. So Never yeah. seen the box though. So basically, it, these are what those came in. So like everything you just said, those would be like a whole bunch of those in two stacks put into this box and you could Got just it. buy it whole. So, but they, but they didn't always really have these. I think when they started coming out with the different editions and gold and different like uh, elements, they stopped doing them. So, but for this one, the Gotta Catch Em All trading card uh, box edition has just been sold for nearly half a million dollars. Wow. This Pokemon you- box set went on sale online and it went for 408 dollars thousand dollars so did they know what cards were in there or was it like a random buy i i'm trying to see what i'm trying to picture so that way i don't lose my mind and go back to you know like the streets i'm hoping that they still all packed up not open. they don't know what's in them 
Exactly. That's what I think. I think it is a pristine grade A. Yes, yeah. yeah, untouched. Pokemon first edition box. Untouched. That has not been un- that hasn't been touched. Yep. If it's that, that makes sense to me, for sure. Nostalgia. Yes, but f- half a mil, like no, our all of our parents. I'm I'm assuming all of our parents told us like there's gonna be more something someday. Like we th- we knew that we knew that when they were buying it for us because it was the craze. Right. We already knew that, but we never ever thought of not opening a pack. Never. Somebody, this guy, whoever's had this in his possession, has to be in his like fifties. He has yeah. to be. Yeah. He could not be our age and had this sitting around there's that's no way. old school that's old school toy mentality like yeah. keep it in the box i mm-hmm. tried to do that with this old captain america thing it lasted like a couple hours and it was i was playing with it, it but it's, what yeah. it's happening but, now you know how hard I, i'm fighting to keep that damn lino in that box that cleo gave me <laughs> grown ass man just sitting at his kitchen counter just changing out little arms and going oh yep i believe it I believe it. But the crazy thing is, is this guy or, 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 or woman was really, really smart because the, the, there's probably nothing in there of value. Like if you really think of the, mm-hmm. the percentage of how much, how many of these packets we were buying and being disappointed and it was a really low percentage. It was almost like the, um, the McDonald's uh, French fry Mc- Monopoly game. It's, it was like, you got so close and then you bought a hundred of them and it just didn't, it was, it was almost like it was rigged. So this person was uh, smart enough to be like, okay, I done bought 30 packs already and got two rare things. This next pack logically probably don't have anything in it either. Yeah. either. But it's like, if I keep it, that's just like a, a weird futuristic, almost like you had to go back in time damn near to do that. So that's just like big ups to them because that's some smart, that is forward thinking. Even smarter though, now that I'm looking, I for, I'm looking at the box, now I notice why too, if it is like that, another reason why it's so expensive. All of these are first editions. Oh, I see that. Yeah. yeah. So if that being the case and all of these are first edition cards, now I see why the value has went up, but still, Half a million dollars. Though. He's going to get a whole bunch of leaf cards, a whole bunch of fists, first edition fists, a whole bunch of potions, a whole bunch of Gary doing Machop. something random. Machop running through that thing. Oh, uh, you're going to get a, you're going to get probably a squirtle. A lot of pidgeys. A lot of pidgeys. A lot of rat, ratatatas in there. A if diglet. He smart, he, which I'm, I'm assuming he didn't because he dropped half a mil for this. But if he did an unboxing video to this, he would make some money back. For sure, because that Man. would go that would go stupid. I just I just gotta wonder though, like, what do you do for a living to go half a million on a box of Pokemon cards? You, you didn't save up for that. Put it like that. You, yeah. you had it. You had yeah. it. You did not. I mean, that's that's something that you're just like, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll do that. You I didn't. Would like, I would like for us to all three take a road, not even a road trip. Let's let's do a little field trip, guys, all four of us, and go to uh, Toy Mandala. Over in the valley, Absolutely. that's where I used to get. That's where we used to get our Pokemon cards from. Yep. And let's all buy. Do, do 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 any of us still own any Pokemon cards? Any? Yes, absolutely. Hey. I can't find mine at all. Our our little brother, we gave him our pack, and then we never saw them ever again. Uh, I would like to buy one. I would like to buy a pack of Pokemon cards, or I would like to just because I'm a grown ass man now, and I could have the money to do it. I want to buy a Charizard card straight out, so I ain't got to worry about it. Give me the Charizard card right now. I'm not waiting for shit. Give it to me. Well, listen, since we, since we doing that, though, man, you ain't talking about buying some Yu-Gi-Oh cards, though. Uh, I'm not having this discussion with you, Willie. That's okay. That's okay. You know what? I, I don't, I don't, I, that's okay. Because you know what? I have found solace that I have friends in this. And me and the tech guy will shoot our own unboxing of a pack of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I want a holographic dark magician in this bitch now. Do it. Do it, do it. Get yourself a, a Exodia Obliterate combination thing that takes you 5,000 trap cards to get to. Do, do what you gotta well, do, bro. All I know is this, my blue eyes white dragon will kick your Charizard's ass. And that's just I'm facts. Not that. I'm not debating that with you. Can your Charizard turn into a three-headed dragon? No, but he turns blue. Mine is already blue, so you're just trying no, to get like me. My special one turns blue. Okay, I almost got really, really sad because I was like, <laughs> because I was like, 
as soon as as soon as a Cleo, because the story you said was a uh, is like a LA legend for this kind of stuff, and I was just like, COVID prob might have hit them pretty tough, and I just looked it up, and it said closed. Um, but it's like you can go for like private shopping, which is actually cooler. So I would, yeah. and you make appointments. So I'm absolutely down to do that. Oh, That's we could cool. definitely do that then. And go shooting there. That's yeah. We should do it, bro. I would think I'm, that'd be a great field trip that we could put on the on the on the channel. I think people would love it. Definitely down. I'd definitely down. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So definitely look out uh, for that, and then also to some other big news to look out for. Uh, Apparently, we're always on the pulse about some stuff that's dropping. And of course, you know, we hit the target again, y'all. Um, if you are familiar with our retro gaming, we played Pokemon Snap. And Patrick was just so in love with this game. We, we started enjoying it that it was like, yo, a remake would be so dope right now. Well, of course, someone at Pokemon Nintendo are big fans of the arcade tokens, and they heard it. Pokemon Snap is back. Not only is Pokemon Snap back, it is being released in April. This oh, April. Kadeem, can you start it over? <laughs> wait, let me get out of this gallery view BS. You don't want to see none of us right now. It's like, I see you all all the time. So Patrick is checking out the newly revised Pokemon Snap here on the video version for all you audio cats that's checking this out. So... Don't you say April? Oh uh, yes, it is going to be April thirtieth when Pokemon Snap comes out. Not waiting. It's just, it's just new Pokemon Snap, by the way. Wait, did you say you're not waiting? <laughs> what are you gonna do? Break into Nintendo and steal the demo? What? No, what is... I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do what I should have did a whole year ago, but I was being a little brat because I wanted, oh, I wanted the exact Pokemon game I wanted. I'm buying, I'm buying the Eevee game. Uh, I'm by, oh, actually, Sword and Shield. I might do that instead. But what was the game before that where you could pick between uh, let's, Pikachu? Let's, or let's go Pikachu. Let's go Eevee. Yep. I might do it. So hey, you my, get it? my thing is this: I don't know what Nintendo's problem is about doing like new, like I, they, that's how they they really be licensing thing. Like the new 3DS, 3DS and the new one. Like they don't even switch how to switch names. A two, nothing. It is. I don't know what's wrong, with I, but hey. It is what it is. It's I, Nintendo. They don't yeah. miss. They don't. Yeah. Yo. What you gonna do if you do it again? But but man. Exactly. New new. I guess you can't do it twice. You can't revamp something twice. So. Well, you can go new Pokemon Snap too. Huh? They and then one. They did do it for the Coliseum though. They did do it for Pokemon uh, Coliseum. Yeah. So. so, but but what really trips me out is just now though the open possibilities of these things. Because if you do not think we are finna see Patrick's IG page flooded with Pokemon Snap pictures, you are sadly mistaken. Oh, I'm I'm doing it right now. You see, like, that's, that's the thing that's tripping me out about Pokemon Snap coming out now. Like, the possibilities now with social media being tied into it, this is crazy. Yeah, look how beautiful it looks, man. The 61... The 61, 64 version looks like butt cheeks, but this one, look at that. 64 one was still fun though. I don't give a damn. I was it was so fun. Yeah. No, it's classic. Yeah. I'm calling it now though. I have a feeling this is gonna become a ride in real life. Oh, wouldn't that be amazing? I yeah. feel like this is gonna be a ride in real life. There's a little Easter egg. There's a little yep. Easter egg in this trailer that's a that is the same thing that happens in the very first Pokemon with Heracross and uh is it we've seen that right there? Haircut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're by the river. They're right by about to go to the waterfall, and you're about to take the picture. Yeah, I remember that. That's fire. Yeah, man. So I look, I, I look forward to us playing this as the arcade tokens on on a red on a, a, a split screen somehow. You know, just out here snapping away, ladies and gentlemen. So be sure to blend us together, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure your auto focus is on. Okay, make sure your aperture levels, your ISO. <laughs> okay, be very, very. I don't want any blurry photos from any of you guys, okay? Not None. at all. I want to focus. I don't want no, I don't want no saturation turns up, no edits, <laughs> man. I want raw photos, yo. And don't be any uh, creepy photographer. I don't want to hear any HR complaints from the, the, the Pokemon saying that you was being creepy, telling them to 
to, to say their name all slowly and gingerly or, or, or meeting up at candlelight. I don't want none of that, okay? <laughs> well, now, point, point at the Pokemon doll and tell me where he touched you. Oh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Only tasteful Pokemon pictures, okay, guys? Tasteful. Ch Jiggly puff. <laughs> Well, last time we played Pokemon Step, I'm pretty sure you ended up inside Vulpix. I'll just leave it at that. I remember last Whoa. time. Who I was that? That was. Whoa. It was. Will literally kept zooming in and out. It was bad. It was a bad. I one. didn't know. I didn't know how to zoom out. <laughs> He's not allowed to play. He's not allowed. No, because y'all didn't tell me the buttons. He's disqualified. <laughs> I kept trying uh, to go. Like, how you get out? I can't not in this game, out. sir. No. no. <laughs> Not in this game, sir. <laughs> not with update graphics. You will not zoom into a Pokemon. Not in, Pokemon, in this bro. one. Oh, yeah, it was bad. It was bad. He had a blue knot, and it was all bad. Anyway. Oh my goodness, man! But y'all are gonna get to see that action, man, and just so much more. I look forward to uh, Pokemon Snap. Looking forward to seeing what uh, comes of GTA Six, and uh, what is gonna come with the next seven episodes of One Division. So hopefully, you know. Pat will be able to catch up, just two episodes, 30 minutes, and we'll be able to kind of keep talking about it and keep y'all going when we do these topical episodes. But ladies yeah. and gentlemen, this has been the end of the RK Tokens podcast. We want to thank y'all for tuning in, checking it out on the video version, the audio version. Make sure that you like, subscribe, comment on these videos, hit those like buttons when it comes to YouTube and Twitch for the RK Tokens, twitch.tv slash RK Tokens. That's it for everything on socials. But as well, follow our personal one, twitch.tv slash Patrick Cloud, Cleo Thomas, Will Farrow, and of course, Cathadius. All of that is the same for our socials and YouTubes, except for Twitter. Mr. Patrick Cloud is pats on your back. Just remember. And you can't forget it. But as always, we've been the RK Token. I am the anomaly, Will Farrow. Cleo Thomas, I came Mr. Slick Living. I'm Patrick Cloud. And we will catch you next time.